what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution X ROM based on Android 13 and this one of course comes with the 90Hz mod. That's just huge because this device was released 3 years ago with a 60Hz AMOLED display and it did not get any kind of refresh rate update in MIUI but right now in 2022 we are getting 90Hz refresh rate update with a custom ROM on this device and again that's huge in my personal opinion. And this is the 15th November 2022 build. Well, this is not the first build where you get the 90Hz mod, but this is actually the most optimized version of the 90Hz mod that you will get. And if you want to flash this ROM, you will get the links in the description of the how to flash guide. And let me actually show you the change logs over here. If you are wondering, there are a couple of notes that you have to set Google Maps camera to 60Hz to get that working properly if it force closes or something. And we have some ROM changes and stuff. You can read them out if you want. But first of all, let me show you the about section. This is how it looks. We have the Evolution X logo up top. It does not have that background kind of hue. It used to have a greenish tint from the background, but right now it has been removed. And the Android version is of course Android 13. And if you make this clock to one o'clock, you will get the Android 13's Easter egg. As you can see, there are these random emojis that will appear and it looks different and beautiful, I would say. Let me go back the security patch you are getting right now of November 5th, 2022. So latest security patch as of right now and the Evolution X version shows as 7.3 and the name is Vengeance and this is the official build you can see. And if you keep tapping on it, you will get the Evolution X's Easter egg kind of. And we have the Soviet star kernel as a default kernel. Here the build date shows as 14th November and the build date is still of course Stalix and the SNX status shows as enforcing. And to confirm that this is the latest update, as you can see from the system update, it can check for updates. This is the latest build as you are noticing. In the gestures and stuff, we still have all those things that we used to have, like the swipe quick screenshot and stuff. All those things are there. There is a capture mode and stuff and deleting screenshot, editing out, everything you can do. We have the system navigation gesture settings and from here we can customize the pill length and radius both. And there are the IME button space hiding option and we have the swipe to invoke assistant and stuff all those things then we also have the amount of screen height to be used for the back gesture all those things are there now the most important thing that i'll show you right now is in the display settings well in here if you scroll down a little bit you will get the refresh rate option and you do have the minimum and maximum refresh rate switching option but i have set it to 90 hertz for the minimum and maximum refresh rate both and you can also switch the low power refresh rate if you want. Now, if you're wondering or asking what's my opinion about the high refresh rate mod, well, I have to say this is one of the best features that magically it switches from 60 hertz to 90 hertz. And it is not a gimmick. I will show you from Chrome. Let me show you with this test to your website. Just notice it is going up to 90 FPS. So that's just huge. And even over here, you can see 90 hertz refresh rate it's showing. So this is not a fake 90 hertz or something. It is working properly and it's working 100% of the time. But if you have replaced your screen or if you have replaced your hardware of the like display, you may face some problems after that, but I haven't replaced my screen. So I cannot comment about it. This is my original display working with 90 hertz and it is working almost perfectly fine. Now I do have one complaint with the 90 hertz. Also, you can toggle the refresh rate with this refresh rate toggle and you can edit this toggle if you want. Like if, if it's not present, you can just add this refresh rate toggle from right here. It will be added. And here, let me actually show you, you can just tap over here and you can switch the refresh rate if you want. But talking about that, if you have the anti flicker mode enabled, if you enable any kind of high refresh rate, you will see in very low brightness, the blacks will turn a little bit greenish to my eyes at least. So that's what has been happening. I have seen that problem. If you're someone who is really, really concerned about colors, then only it will give you a little bit of problems. But otherwise, if you are like not nitpicky about the colors and stuff, I would say this is going to be a great experience overall because the blacks turns out slightly dark kind of greenish if you enable the 90 hertz. It happens even more for me in 84 hertz, like 60 hertz, 90 hertz, 72 hertz, these three options are working perfectly fine for me, but the 84 hertz sometimes becomes a little bit choppy, I would say, but overall with 90 hertz, the whole UI just stays really, really smooth. I haven't noticed any kind of problems whatsoever. As you can see, the apps really open particularly really smoothly, no issues whatsoever with the animations and stuff. Everywhere, I just see smoothness all the way. So this is, I would say, one of the best updates of the Evolution X ROM that you can get with the 90 Hertz refresh rate. UAV online. Enemy down. 
down. Sniper. Contact with enemy. Sniper down. Enemy in sight. Sniper. Tangle down. Keep on them. Winning this one. Enemy contact. Tangle down. Contact with enemy. Targets in sight. Enemy contact. Get down, sniper. Now, talking about the quick setting panel, of course, I have added multiple toggles, and we have the Wi Fi, the mobile data, and the Bluetooth toggle and stuff. The dark theme and we have the night light the always on display enabling or disabling option is right there and you can also switch it to the always on display for charging only and there's a screen recording and stuff we have the enable hevc option if you want that and the do not disturb mode is there then the google home controls the battery saver and the fps info appears like this and as you can see the display is running at more than 80 fps it shows over here let me just disable that and we have the reboot toggle too so yeah the quick setting panel toggles are there and you can of course use it if you want you can add even more toggles if you want and of course you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here and of course talking about the customization we still have multiple amount of customization like for the black theme you have multiple theming option for the pitch black and stuff and we have multiple body font options too as you can see plethora of fonts you will get and we have the icon packs and stuff then the signal icon styles also we get the wi-fi icon styles too then we have the icon shapes and everything you can customize that's just huge and you can see which options you are choosing that's really great let me go back and yes everywhere you will get the customizations which were present earlier and it is even like more in numbers and features as you can see the unlimited google photos backup unlock higher fps in games the volume panel timeout everything is there and this is how the volume panel actually looks and you can switch your device if you are connected to a bluetooth device or something and even in wi-fi you will see there is that 5 written in the wi-fi signal icon that's because i am connected to a 5 gigahertz wi-fi if you are connected to a 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi it will show you as 4. let's talk about the battery life and in here as you can see in the battery settings we have the charging cycles and i have completed 10 charging cycles there's a new battery that i have got over here i have replaced my battery from service center and the battery temperature shows up on the bottom no issues and the design battery capacity current battery capacity all those things you can see also let me actually show you with this aku battery app i have tested the battery life and with that the battery life has been great and it is showing me about 8 plus hours of screen on time that's just huge also the screen off you can see is about 10 days that's again a huge number and even combined use is about four and a half days or five days i would say and in the health section as you can see my battery health shows as 97 percent so yeah this is a brand new battery so no issues whatsoever for me regarding the battery health and even fast charging is working fine no issues that i have found but here the animation has changed a little bit i think so this is how the animation looks like whenever you are plugging in the device with the charger now let's talk about the stock camera well you do get the gcam go still and this is how it looks and we have the night mode the hdr enhanced option and stuff and let me switch the front camera you do have the face retouching option and stuff and with this you can take selfies and stuff no issues whatsoever even with the portrait mode it takes good quality pictures i would say so yeah i did not feel any kind of issues but let me actually show you this like settings panel kind of has changed i think this has switched to the older kind of gcam go for some reason but yeah this is proper like stable gcam i would say also i have installed the lmc version of the gcam that actually has the lens switching option like the 2x telephoto lens you can actually switch to that from right here as you are noticing also the ultra wide angle lens you can switch to that from right here so yeah you can use this lmc one if you want but let me tell you for that you have to install it separately i'll link it below in the description you should not worry about it and even with this the front camera and stuff everything is working no issues that i have found and talking about the basic things yes safety net passes right out of the box you should not worry about it also the drm status shows as l1 so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 1080p and talking about the settings of the screen lock we have the quick unlock and stuff and in here we have the face unlock and fingerprint both option and in the mode lock settings we do have the app lock let me actually show you you can enable particular apps if you want to like lock those 
as you can see we have this enable that and right now if i try to open the lock tab this is how it will look and if i tap the fumit scanner as you can see the app particularly unlocks now let's talk about the fumit scanner speed and i do have the screen of a 40 enable that's why if i tap the fumit scanner area as you can see it unlocks right away let me show you one more time with my left thumb and as you can see it unlocks and if you enable the always on display let me double tap on the status bar this is how the always on display actually looks and if you double tap the clock becomes a slightly bigger and this is how it looks the animation i mean and from the always on display too the film scanner has been working perfectly fine even with 90 hertz refresh rate even with anti flicker mode on so yeah no issues whatsoever i have had with the film scanner as you're noticing it's working perfectly fine I do not have the face unlock setup that's why I need to set it up first. For some reason I cannot really set up the face unlock right now it shows something went wrong I don't know why it is showing like that. It opened the front camera for once but right now it shows face scan has failed. So I just completed the setup of the face unlock later and right now let me actually show you the face unlock speed and from here I have to double tap and swipe up and as you can see right now and it's working perfectly fine I guess. Let me try one more time. So yeah, it unlocks but takes a little bit of time if that is not like directly light in my face I guess for some reason as you can see this is how it unlocks with the face unlock. It is actually working with the face unlock but definitely it is slower than the fingerprint scanner because this is a motorized selfie camera. But yeah overall in the sound settings and stuff we still have the Mi sound enhancer and we can choose from all these presets of the headphones and even the other like sound preset option or the EQ preset options are there. And we have the smart scene mode and the enable hi-fi option and stuff. Then the haptic feedback, you can customize the intensity of it from here. The clear speaker option is there, silent and mute option is there. Then we have the power app volume control and the charging sound, charging vibration. All those settings are there in the sound settings. So you should not worry about them. And here are the Android and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build to get you an idea about the performance of this ROM. So again, in terms of the conclusion, I have to say this is one of the most smoothest experience I have got for the Redmi K20 Pro. At least let me know in the comments what do you guys think about the 90Hz update of the Evolution X ROM for the Redmi K20 Pro. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, share this video with your friends if they did not know that 90Hz update is already live for the Redmi K20 Pro. So if you want to use this ROM as your daily driver, definitely for the Redmi K20 Pro it is gonna be amazing experience. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDNDX signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.